I am pleased, so pleased, to begin with a conversation between New York Post political columnist Michael Goodwin and former New York City Comptroller Bill Thompson. Please welcome Michael and Bill. So Bill is running for mayor. That's the news. Uh, for those of you who don't follow politics like a junkie, the rest of us, uh, since 1989, 1989 was the last time a Democrat won City Hall. Bill, of course, is a Democrat. And this is a very Democratic city in so many ways, registration particularly, and yet Republicans have won the last five mayoral elections. So, and Bill, you were the Democratic Party nominee in the last election, mm -hmm. 2009. Uh, what went wrong for you and what has happened to the Democratic Party in New York? Oh, I don't know that it's something that, that, I don't know that it's a negative about the Democratic Party. I think that if anything, it speaks to New Yorkers uh, making choices. And different times have made, have made different choices for different reasons. 1993, New Yorkers supported and voted for a Republican. I think there were a number of factors that went into that. I think there was a larger concern you know, it's kind of the height of the crack epidemic and drug ep epidemic. And New Yorkers were most concerned about crime. And I think that speaks, as well as a couple of other instances. And, and, and if you look at 93, if you look at 2001, there were defining issues also. There were events that occurred each one of those years. And I think that if you look, that's why New Yorkers made different choices in 1993 and in 2001. So I don't think it spoke to the Democratic Party. I think it spoke to choices that New Yorkers made for other reasons, for, you know, for defining moments that occurred during those years. Okay. Uh, let's look forward a little bit now in terms of uh, next year's campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you assess the state of the city right now as we sit here today? I think the state of the city it, it, it is almost, um, it depends upon where you are. State of the city, we are adding some jobs at higher end. We're adding some jobs in the service sector. Um, you know, th there are, I'm sure that, uh, you know, but at the same point, unemployment in Brooklyn and in the Bronx is over 14%. The large number of unemployed African American men last year, if you go back and look at some studies, I think it is, you know, it's uneven. So is New York bouncing back from one of the, you know, from an incredibly difficult recession? Absolutely. But is everybody bouncing back? Is everybody coming back in that recovery? I think the answer is no. You know, you look at an education system, and, and I won't reference CUNY, um, but my friends in CUNY point out that right now, 75% of New York City public school graduates can't, can't get into the four-year institutions, can't do college-level work. They need remediation. Mm -hmm. So I think that as you look at, there's so many things that are happening in one sense that you could say, well, that's something good. But at the same point, if you look across the city, homelessness at an all-time high, uh, poverty, and, and not just those who are poor, but those who are super poor in the city of New York continues to grow. So you're looking at, you know, the one thing about New York City, we all believe in prosperity. We all believe, but we also want to see prosperity for everyone and the opportunities for prosperity for everyone. So what you're seeing right now is a New York City that is coming back, but a New York City that in its recovery is uneven. I think that's what we're looking okay. at. Uh, <clears throat> you and I have talked before about uh, the police department, and mm -hmm. you have, I think, surprised some people by say saying that you think New York City needs more police officers. Can you explain that a little bit? Well, I, I, I'm a lifelong, for those of you who don't know, I'm a lifelong New Yorker. I grew up in central Brooklyn. I grew up in Bedford-Stuyvesant and lived in, in Brooklyn for most of my life and live in Harlem right now. I remember what it was like to live behind closed doors. I remember what it's like to hear gunshots in the night. I remember what it was like to have to look over not both shoulders, but almost to be able to be able to swivel and pivot uh, as you came home. And if you came home on the train uh, or the bus, you were worried. That's changed in a lot of ways. It hasn't fully changed in the city of New York, but it's partially changed. 
And I think that right now it's a concern. We don't want to take steps backwards. We don't want to go back to the old days. We don't want to go back to listening, even though you're starting to see, you know, where there is still an, a major concern about gun violence in the city of New York. We don't want to take steps back. I think that one of the things, and, and it is a column that you wrote, and, and by the way, if, if you don't read Michael Goodwin um, in the New York Post, read Michael. Sometimes you will agree with him. Sometimes you will throw things at the newspaper uh, or, or look to wrap it up, uh, wrap fish and other things in the newspaper. Um, but Michael wrote about that and, and went back and forth a bit. We're below 35,000 as far as the number of police officers. I had said 20 years. Michael checked it was 30 years. We haven't been below 35,000 police officers in almost 30 years. Since, uh, I, since David Dinkins was... I believe that that police compliment or the lack of officers is having an impact in the city of New York and is making New York less safe. Okay. So I just think it is important if there's anything that has helped to change the city of New York, it is the reduction of crime, at least in my lifetime. And what it has meant for New York City, it has helped in tourism, it has helped in growth. Neighborhoods where you look and see development these days where people would have been scared to live there before, that's changing. Right. At the same point, there are communities that are again becoming greatly concerned about an increase in crime. We have to help those neighborhoods also. One of the uh, issues that Mayor Bloomberg is working on is, of course, very much thematic with uh, the MAS gathering, is uh, the development of, of Midtown mm -hmm. and the rezoning. <clears throat> Your thoughts on that idea? Okay. Uh, first, I, I think that it is important. New York City, when we look at growth and development, I believe in growth and development. I think that New York City is an, always a city that has looked to the future while at the same point not ignoring our rich past. I think that New York City is a city that continues to need to grow and develop. We're gonna, you know, we continue to add people, but we continue to reinvent ourselves each and every, heck, each and every year. We continue to change just a little bit. Midtown East, and it is important that we take a look at growth in Midtown East. What I am against, there seems to be a rush to get this done in the next 14 months while, you know, while, the, while Mike Bloomberg is still in City Hall. I think that is a mistake. I believe in growth, but I believe in growth, I'll call it smart growth, growth that's inclusive, growth that listens to the voices in communities as well as the development community, but we grow and, and do it in smart ways. This rush to develop, rush to getting things done in the next 14 months is a mistake. I oppose it. I think it is a recipe in the long run for disaster. And at the same point, when I talk about smart growth, that's growth that looks across the entire city of New York. New York City and each and every borough should be part of that growth. The residents, the business people within those neighborhoods, we talk about crime and crime reduction, well, we want to make sure that, that, that people are part of that. We want to make sure that merchants across the city of New York, within their local communities, have an opportunity to grow and be part of a city that grows. Immigrants from around the world are part of that growth. At the same point, we don't want to rush to growth. We want to hear the voices. So I just think that transparency and I think not just growth, process is important. Well, just to that point though, mm -hmm. other than the process, do you have particular objections to the way the mayor has proposed uh, the Grand Central area? I, I think that right now it's, there is a, Rapid proposal, what it fully entails, I don't know that you've seen all the details. It's kind of like, well, trust me and we'll, and we'll just move forward. I, I don't think that that's good government. I don't think that that's an inclusive process. I don't think that that's a process that looks to future prosperity and includes others in that discussion. So as I said, I am pro-growth and pro-development. New York City needs to continue to grow and build um, and, and, and change but we don't need to do it overnight. We need to do it intelligently, and that's why I call it smart growth. Do you see a, a, a sort of 20, 30 years down the road, do you see a maximum population that New York City could have and still be livable, still be a vibrant city that has flexibility? <laughs> 
it's hard to say what, what the city, what, what, what building, what, what things look like in the future. I think that there are people who would have said that, you know, who will look at where we're at right now and say, okay, we're at a saturation point. You know, we've grown enough. Clearly we haven't. There's still a lot more other things that we can do at the same point while still respecting communities and the flavor mm -hmm. and tenor of those communities. I don't know that there is. I don't know that there's a, a magic number that we can reach and say, that's the, you know, that's the maximum for New York City because we continue to look and find ways to do new things. I would say that as we look to grow, things like open space, uh, things like you know, uh, affordability, and that's something you and I have talked right. about at the same point, a city that doesn't continue to price its people out. One thing I don't want to become is a city of you know, that barbell effect with the very rich and everybody else and kind of the middle there, nobody there. I think we have to be very careful about that. Doesn't the cost of government contribute to that, though? The cost of government in some ways does. But I think that, you know, in government that really, if we look at a New York City that reinvents itself in the last uh, 20, 30, 40 years, government hasn't reinvented itself. And I think that that's something that as we look to the future, how do we do things differently and better? How do we do that and work together? And I think that's important. And, and, and in that case, I would say that is, you know, that is government, that's the residents, that's the unions, those are the stakeholders also who are involved in that discussion in looking to what the government that will best serve the people of this city looks like in the future. Do, do you, final question, we're just about out of time, but do you think that in terms of the, the infrastructure of community uh, consultation, whether it's community boards, uh, the groups that the Merchants Association, the bids, mm -hmm. uh, that sort of way of reaching City Hall, the City Council members themselves, do you think that there are any changes needed? To, is there a new level, a new institution? Do we have too many levels? I, I think that one of the problems that we run into these days is some of the institutions that exist, no one listens to, or at the very least, City Hall doesn't listen. And I, so I, I, it's not a question of adding more voices. It's a question of the voices that are there, listening to those voices. And I think that that is something right now that you don't want to be paralyzed, right. but you want to listen. Make decisions and then you move forward. I think that's important and I think that is a city where those out there, whether it's the business community, the development community, the local community, everybody winds up having a voice in those decisions and then you move forward and then you move forward. So as a, as a new mayor, you would, you would try to make it clear that you do want to hear more. You, you think that's an important part of this? The one thing I've learned over a period of time, and, and you know, while I think we all like to believe that we have all the answers, I don't have all the answers. And one of the things in, in listening, you gain information, you gain knowledge, it makes you smarter and better. The one thing that you, ha that you, you know, the one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to be paralyzed in that discussion process. But in listening and getting other opinions and being able to move forward and make smart decisions, I think it makes us better. I think it makes the city better. We'll leave it on smart decisions. Thank you, Bill. Thank you all. <laughs>